have you seen these egyptian pyramids you know these are one of the most ancient and largest construction in the world and these were made only with the use of bricks and stones now in those ancient times cranes were not available so how did the egyptian worker carry the bricks and the, and the stones till the top of the pyramids so the egyptian workers used a very simple machine in order to carry the bricks and the stones till the top of the pyramid this simple machine is known as an inclined plane not only do the egyptians use inclined plane but it is used all over the world the staircase which you use is also an a modified form of an inclined plane so what exactly is inclined plane it is nothing but a flat sloping surface which is inclined onto a horizontal surface and it acts like a simple machine and help us to lift heavier objects well let's see the definition of an inclined plane well it is a sloping surface which behaves like a simple machine that is it's sloping on a horizontal surface see it is inclined at a degree angle here and it behaves like a simple machine which helps us do our work easily and also it has a mechanical advantage greater than 1 so having mechanical advantage greater than 1 means ma is equal to load by effort this you know so if ma is greater than 1 that would mean your load is greater than effort that is you are applying a smaller effort in order to lift up or move a heavier load so inclined plane always have the mechanical advantage greater than 1 well well let's clarify this fact that an inclined plane will always have mechanical advantage greater than 1 or not for that we need to derive an important formula for inclined plane look at this diagram here ac is an inclined plane and we are trying to lift a box m with the help of this inclined plane ac the length of this inclined plane is l and the effective height which we are trying to move the box is h the bc is h now the load of the box that is the weight of the box can be denoted by mass of the box into the acceleration due to gravity which is denoted by g that is the load of the box can be written as m into g now this mg is acting downwards due to the force of acceleration due to gravity not only the load but two other forces are also acting when we move the box up the inclined plane these two forces are the effort which is denoted by e and a resistive or reaction force which is denoted by r so this effort is acting along the plane upwards that is in this direction and the reaction force is acting perpendicularly upwards to the plane so the reaction or r is acting normal to the plane upwards now i have already mentioned to you that any inclined plane like this ac makes an angle theta with the horizontal plane that is the ac makes an angle theta here now the load which is acting directly downwards that is mg can also be resolved into two components a vertical component and a horizontal component so this horizontal component of the load also makes the same angle theta with the load that is equal to mg now any two dimensional force component like the load which was acting downward can be resolved into two components that is a vertical component and a horizontal component this is very evident in our practical life where a suitcase with rollers like this can be either lifted vertically or it can be dragged horizontally 
same way a two dimensional force component can be resolved in a vertical component and in a horizontal component so let's see how this angle theta can be further resolved firstly you know sin theta is opposite side by the hypotenuse side that is here the opposite side will be f vertical and the hypotenuse will be f that is this line so sin theta can be written as f vertical by f so from this you can find out the vertical component to be f into sin theta similarly cos theta you know is adjacent side by hypotenuse side now adjacent side here is the f horizontal component and hypotenuse you know is f so f horizontal component can be resolved as f into cos theta let's write this down on the inclined plane like you know f is equal to mg that is load so the f vertical component can be written as mg sin theta or it could be written as f sin theta and the horizontal component can be either written as f cos theta or mg cos theta now remember from the previous diagram this mg sin theta actually corresponds to the effort which is acting along the plane upwards and the mg cos theta is corresponding to, to the r reaction force which acts perpendicularly upwards so mg cos theta can be written as r and mg sin theta can be written as e now coming back to the mechanical advantage for this inclined plane mechanical advantage you know can be written as load by effort so remember from the previous example load is mg that is mass into acceleration due to gravity and effort can could be resolved as mg sin theta or f sin theta now solving this we get mechanical advantage is equal to 1 by sin theta now the length of the inclined plane ac could be written as l that is the length of ac now l is actually the distance the effort is moving in order to move the load therefore de could be written as l so de can be written as l that is length of the inclined plane and the height of the inclined plane was h that is it could be written as the displacement of the load that is the load is moving an effective length of h so dl or the displacement of load can be written as h like this so the mechanical advantage was 1 by sin theta we had derived it and sin theta you know is the opposite side by the hypotenuse that is h by l so 1 by sin theta would be l by h so the mechanical advantage of an inclined plane can be written as the length of the inclined plane by the height h and as you know the length of the inclined plane will always be greater than the height therefore the mechanical advantage of an inclined plane will always be greater than 1 that is in conditions where the length is greater than the height now what about the velocity ratio of an inclined plane velocity ratio you know is displacement of effort by displacement of load which can also be denoted by de that is how much the effort moves in doing the work and dl that is how much the load is moved by the machine so here the displacement of effort is ac and the displacement of load is h or bc so velocity ratio can also be written by l by h 
So the efficiency of the inclined plane can be written as mechanical advantage by velocity ratio. Now you saw that mechanical advantage was L by H. Also, the velocity ratio was L by H. So efficiency can be written as 1. Hence, in a frictionless inclined plane, efficiency or eta is equal to 1. But it's not always that we have an inclined plane which does not have friction. Usually, the force of friction reduces the mechanical advantage and makes it less than L by H due to the presence of friction. Therefore, with an inclined plane which has friction, the efficiency is always less than 1. Efficiency. 